Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the channel. We're doing a stock market brief show, a little bit different than usual. Today, we're going to be talking about how trading is hard until you can really understand the concept. And the concept that I'm going to be discussing is market conditions when they change. This right here is just a quick snapshot of my last year, or sorry, one year total. So this is today. This is one year ago, exactly. p and I'm up about 51.7% in this main account here. And I really started getting a little bit more aggressive in October. This is around the time that the S&P 500 started finding its bottom. And the reason why I want to talk about when market conditions change is because we need to be prepared for these type of things. And it, this could be from shorter time frames to longer time frames or anything in between. When I look at this chart here, the S&P 500 has been one way up. And really, no one has been saying, hey, this is exactly what's going to be happening. We're not going to have a 5% pullback in, in this amount of time. But what we do know is if you're following the trend, you can very simply have a PL curve that looks like this too as well. But you got to be prepared because we don't know how far a stock or an equity or an asset can go. This is the blind luck. When you catch the trend, how far can that trend go? But when things turn around, are you going to constantly try to buy the dip if it's going against you? And then all of a sudden lever up to the point where you lose out on all the gains that you managed to trade. So we're going to talk about what it is that I look for which I mentioned frequently on this show, but re kind of reiterate about how I plan on changing my strategy when market conditions change and where my focus goes at that point. Okay, if we go over here, I wanted to call out, this is looking at asset managers, a survey, and it's reading a bar that says 103.88. So this is basically telling us that asset managers from the survey are, are leveraged long. When it reads above 100%, it's talking about being 100% invested plus some, right, being leveraged long. And you can see looking back, it's very rare. I mean, at some cases you get to these extreme points and you can use this as not really a a, a, a way to, how do I say, you don't, you don't really use this as like a, to initiate a new trade, but it does allow you to see when sentiment gets extreme. And we talked about that on the prior episode. Now the chart below it, I want to kind of call more focus to, and that is the Rydex. I'm not going to dive too much into what the Rydex is, but it's this is actually looking at what real money may be doing. So it's taking the bull bear ratio and looking actually factoring in real money. And when it's a low reading, right, which it's really low here, that means it's incredibly bullish. So I wanted to pull up this chart and show you, this is that just showing dis displayed on a different, it's on a weekly basis with a line chart. And you can see we're getting this reading down here on the Rydex, which remembers lows mean extremely bullish, high means extremely bearish sentiment. And that means it could be contra, right? If things get overly extreme in any direction, we can see markets turn. Well, the last time we've been here was in 2022. And as we know, we went through a bear market in 2022. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, if things get extremely bearish, is this like a high? Does it go higher than that? Well, I, I zoomed out and I wanted to show you when things get pretty bearish, you can see this was the last spike we called out. This was in October. So when things get bearish, you look to the left of the chart and you say, hey, things got very bearish, crazy sentiment here. Maybe you take a contra move and you can add that in as just a level of certainty or an ideal in your favor if you're trying to go long in that extreme case, right? Things got really extreme down here at October at that bottom. And we've rallied since that point. And since we've been rallying, now things are getting, well, very, very bullish sentiment, which could potentially lead to a period of contraction, right, where the market starts to consolidate or break. Now, one of the big levels that I'm watching here is that weekly 5 EMA. You can see we actually tagged it today. We saw some weakness in the markets, right? Nothing nothing too absurd, but the the, the heat map here was lit up for, for the most part. And then even if you look at the index watch, right, the advancers decline line for the S&P 100, which are the largest 100 stocks that make up the S&P 100, largest market cap names, you can see that we had 78 declining stocks, 22 advancing issues. So there was some clear sell side today. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but I wanted to just kind of show you what sentiment looks like and how everyone, I got what I'm seeing out there in the, in the Twitter sphere and just kind of on the message boards, just see what I'm seeing is, is people are really bold up. They're very confident. That, and, they, and they're acting as if they really know what's going to happen. But I, I want to reiterate that this right here, this is, the, if you caught the move and you're strategically with the skill of, of being able to stay in it, that's one thing. But we, the, the, the luck here that's involved in this move is we didn't know how high it was going to go. And we don't know how it's high it's going to continue to go. And that right there is, is the luck. Now, the real skill 
to be is is yet to be seen, and that's when we actually go through a period of contraction, a per, a, a, a sideways price action, a consolidation, a pullback, etc. Now we know that the market's been pricing out some of these Fed rate hikes, right? We were at like six rate, sorry, six rate cuts. We were looking at about six rate cuts this year, and now we're pricing it back to around three, where we get one cut, two cut, and into the end of the year, three cuts. And we don't even know if that's going to be the case. We're seeing inflationary things like like uh, oil start to rise, and it's, it was even up higher today. And we're seeing things like, like safety assets really starting to rip higher and creating new highs, like gold today hit another another all-time high. And this should be somewhat concerning, and we should be aware of it. You're, you can look at assets like the 10-year yield. We talked about that yesterday, and the correlations between the 10-year yield, oil, and energy stocks. Right, And it just so happens that energy was the top performing sector on the day, continuing to press higher, not something that I'm going to be chasing. I'm looking for the consolidation, but that is just a monster move. And go figure, right? You see the rest of the S&P 500 down on the day when the relative performance of energy starts to really take off, right? Like I said, if you haven't watched that video, go back over there and, and uh, uh, watch yesterday's episode where I dive in a little bit more deep into that. Now, the reason why I'm talking about my strategy and plan when the conditions change, right? As it stands right now, we're seeing a pullback in an uptrend. That's that's what it is. But on the shorter time frame, we did crack under the five-day moving average. It's flat. Now it's going to start declining as time progresses, right? So this is one day, two day, three day, four day, five day. And this is what the five-day moving average right here is calculating. So if we stay below it, right, and we start losing data, this is going to start turning around very soon. Now, today we tagged into the lower weekly expected move and we managed to hold that level. As you can see, right? If you executed into it and you were trying to buy the dip, you have to be very careful because it came basically straight down outside of it. Then we bounced up. Then we came in lower. This produced a higher low, albeit as well as a lower high. So this is just highlighting the period of contraction. Now, if you watch my lives, we talked about this lives and we said, I, before I had to get off, I said, if this is broken, that could that's the first sign that you'd want to see as far as bullish, bullish, a bullish case. And we happen to have some follow through there, kind of breaking from that week to date, uh, weekly expected move. Okay, so we're below the, sorry, the, the five-day moving average. We're below the five-day moving average. That's one of the things when it starts to trend down, that is more bearish for my trading strategy specifically. And then we look at the SPX chart. I'll look up, I'll pull up a Wanda and I'll pull up the gamma exposure levels. And right now, as it stands, right, we'll get an update tomorrow. When we get the update tomorrow, I'll see what the new gamma level is. But as it stands right now, it went from 5230 to 5240, right? 5230 to 5240. Uh, and we said when it goes into negative gamma territory, what happens? This is where dealers can sell into selling but also buy into buying. So you get what? You get much more volatile price swings. What happened? We came down into these zero date levels that we identified in the early trading session on the live stream. We held from those levels and we saw a pretty strong move back after it kind of chopped around. Okay, since we're still in negative gamma territory as it stands, remember, selling begets selling, buying begets buying, you get much more volatile price moves. So the market conditions for me are changing. We're in negative gamma territory, we're below a five-day moving average. This could change back to more positive in a day, right? It can go right back to normal and we can reconsider it. But when this happens, when it when I trade, or the way that I trade, right, I look for I look for periods of consolidation and I play breakouts. So for example, one try one trade here, I'm currently in, right? I've noticed that when we're in negative gamma territory, right, and then we're also below a five-day moving average for the S&P 500, it, a lot of stocks, when we see this volatility enter, we get a lot more fake outs. So we did break out here and, right, it came in a little bit today. But if we, if I start getting stopped out on a lot of my positions, this is where, if I'm looking at my portfolio from this perspective, I have some... I have various trades on, right? And if they're working in my favor, I'm adding, I'm new, I'm looking for new positions and and my portfolio is doing good. You're getting you're getting this type of effect on the PL, right? This is this is what has been happening. However, on the flip side to that, if things start getting hit and the market conditions are changing, the way that I identify them is changing, that means I'm gonna start losing, right? And I, my PL can start dropping, but I'm not trying to add more to the positions. I'm not trying to increase volatility, increase beta into the portfolio. I'm doing less positions and they're getting stopped out. So my PL starts to flatten out until more opportunities arrive. Now, during this time, if I'm not doing my swing trades, if things aren't working out, I'm looking to day trade the volatility, right? And that I have specific, specific, uh, 
things that I do, I'll play more into gamma levels. I'll, 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 I'll go on smaller time frames, and I get more aggressive. But from a day trading perspective, because that is when I, I, I stand to do a little bit better in terms of more volatility. When volatility suppresses, I find that that to be better for a swing trading um, for myself, a swing trading environment. That's all I really wanted to talk about on today's episode, everybody. Uh, as far as the gamma levels go, we'll update really quickly on that. But I'll, if I can go live tomorrow, I'll try to go live tomorrow. But the call wall is still 5,300 here. Traders aren't really reaching out too further there. Um, and it seems pretty stagnant. So this could very well just be a pullback and an uptrend. We did fill that area of liquidity down at 5,250 that we identified on last night's brief. And now we saw early morning trading session, a huge orders come down here of around a few thousand. And it's still holding down there at around 5,232. Uh, I, I guess since I'm here, why, why not show a couple of... Uh, this is Vantage Point software. Vantage Point software I, I haven't used for a while, so I'm not going to really run through too much of it, but I brought up like the Spies Q's IWM. This is, it uses a neural network to forecast price trends, and it's it's claimed to have a pretty high accuracy rate. This stuff is not cheap software, so you're not going to see other probably other YouTubers using this or bringing it up too often, and I don't plan on it either. But you can see the SPY, you're looking at some of these differentials, so the long-term, medium-term, short-term, they're all pointing down here, which is a negative thing, and then you see their predictive range going into tomorrow. It's quite a large range. You have a higher high and a lower uh, lower low. So it's quite all over the place as it's moving into one of its long-term predictive averages here. So if we do start getting, if I'm looking over here at its neural, the neural max over here, it's also red. So this to me, when these are all pointing down and you have this big open range and this is red, it seems to me that we can break the low here or test it at some point. But more specifically, one that I found interesting today was the IWM. And the IWM, it's the same thing, but look at the predicted range here. It's looking a lot, lot lower so it's putting a lower lower high and a lower low with a much larger range. So this would be interesting to see what happens if small caps come down into this range, right? This is, I don't know for sure if that's going to happen or what. And then I have the Qs here too. It's actually putting in a higher low and a higher high, albeit that the the, the neural max is still saying that it's it it tends to be lower in the next couple of trading days given this given this context. So we'll see what happens there. Thought this was kind of cool and I'll pull up. I also had UNG up UNG natural gas, but this is starting to trend a little bit higher here and get some green on the screen, but overall kind of flat. Thought that was kind of interesting. And that's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Hope it helped out and gave you some insight into what I plan on doing when these market conditions do change as they're changing right now before our very eyes. See you later.